Let's stand up. Let's do it. Let's worship His holy name. 10,000 years and forevermore, we're going to worship you, King of kings and Lord of lords. We bless you. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that's within me. Come up all across this room. Lift up your voices. Lift up your hands. Worship Him. Praise Him. Honor Him. Bless Him, Lord. We do. We bless you. We honor you. We exalt you. We magnify you. Your name, that name above every name, the precious name of Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. Awesome are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Mighty are you. Great to be praised. Great is your name. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a shout in this place. Glory to God. How many of you love praising the Lord? Worshiping Him? You better. You might as well get used to it. Because forever, turn to somebody and say forever. Turn to somebody else and say that's a long time. Forever we're going to worship Him. Hallelujah. Come on, give Him one more shout. Why don't you turn to three or four people and just tell them, I'm sure glad you're here tonight. I'm sure glad you're here tonight. You're in the right place. Got a word for you tonight. This is the hungry crowd. This is the crowd that wants miracles in their life and want to hear from the Lord. I've got a message for you tonight. How to win the Super Bowl of life. It's already been alluded to, so it's no secret. I guess now there is a another game going on called NFL Super Bowl. But, you know, that game is just for one season and only one team out of all the teams is going to walk away with the championship trophy. And it only matters on the spectrum of eternity way down here. When you talk about life, we can win the Super Bowl of life and it goes on for eternity and impacts not only our life forever, but for others. Turn to somebody and say, get ready. Open up your Bibles to Psalm 127. Before I get into the Word, I, I thought, I got to thinking, how many of you love little kids? We got six grandkids, and they're always fun to be around. They'll keep you young. We had our youngest granddaughter with us just a couple of days ago, and he, she was in the back seat of the car. She's four years old, and she was just talking and going on and on, and she was figuring things out. And really, it was kind of amazing, you know. So it's amazing that you can figure that out. And up out of said, I'm just a genius. <laughs> four four year olds prophesying over herself. I'm, I'm just a genius. And then we were back here praying, and Ethan and Amber Jacobson, who pastor our bus ministry, mobile kids, our domestic outreach area, they've got a little girl. I don't know, she's about three years old, and she comes running up to me. We're at prayer time here this morning, comes running up to me with a great big smile on her face and gives me a big, I saw you on TV. She thinks I'm Pat Sachak. So I'm spinning the wheel. Are you ready for the word? I love little kids. They're full of God's love. You know, there's just something innocent and pure about little kids. I said, you know, the Bible tells us we need to have faith like a child. When we can have faith like that, then the impossible is possible when we have that kind of faith. Well, we want to talk about how to win the Super Bowl of life. And really, I'm, I'm going to keep this fairly short. I'm going to just share really one major key, one major secret to winning in life. And then I'm going to share two major components of that key. And the, the key to winning in life is right here in Psalm 127, verse 1. It says, unless the Lord build the house, they that build labor in vain. Unless the Lord build the house, they that build labor in vain. I got a question for everyone here tonight. If you're watching, we're so glad you tuned in. My question is this, are you laboring in vain? You see, what the psalmist is referring to here in Psalm 127 is not building a house that's made with wood, nail, wood, nails, brick, 
and mortar. He's talking about building our lives. What we think, what we do, our relationships, our attitude, who we are. And what we need to understand is if God is not involved in that process, if we're trying to build our life without God's direction and God's help, we labor in vain. You know, sometimes we can get so busy doing life, working hard. How many of you are working hard? How many, times, how many know sometimes life can have challenges in it? And we can get so focused trying to do what's right, working hard, building a life for ourselves and our family, we forget that God is the master builder. And if we keep God out of the equation and don't enlist his help and his direction and get his input and his guidance in our life, what happens is life ends up disastrous, disappointing, frustrating. We need God at the helm helping us and instructing us and building our life. If we want to win the Super Bowl of life, we've got to have God building our life. He's the potter and we are the clay. And so the first thing we have to do, if God, how many of you want God to build your house? See, if he's not building it, then what we're doing is futile. You, you can work hard, you can try your best, you can give it your best shot, but he needs to be the coach. You know, to win the Super Bowl, it's a team effort, and there has to be great coaching involved. The team that wins tonight uh, in the Super Bowl, NFL Super Bowl competition, is going to be a result of who's got the best team and who did the best job of coaching. I want you to know right now, we got the best coach. He is God Almighty. He is the master builder. He is the creator. He knows exactly our weaknesses, our strength. He knows how he put us together. He is the one that put the DNA inside of you. He knows exactly what it takes for you to navigate life and for you to progress down the road to where he wants you to go. We just need to surrender to him. If we're going to allow God to be the builder, see, here's the deal. Let God build your house. Turn to somebody and just say, let God build your house. If you're going to win the Super Bowl of life, then God's got to be the coach. He's got to be the builder of your life. If he's building your life, you can mark it down. You are promised victory. You are promised the championship. You are promised the trophy. You are promised the crowns because he's going to make sure you get from point A to point B if you allow him to direct you, if you allow him to build the house, if you will let him coach you, if you let him mentor you, we're going to be the Super Bowl champions of our life if God is building our life. If we allow him to be the potter, if we'll get on the potter's wheel and just continue to let him shape us and mold us. He is working on us, working in us to will and do his good pleasure. Turn to somebody and say, God's working on me. Turn to somebody else and say, God's not finished with me yet. The best place to be in life is in the center of God's will. To be in the hand of the potter. Letting him, sometimes the potter, when he's shaping that clay pot, he puts pressure on it sometimes to shape it, to mold it. How many of you have ever felt the pressure, you know, that God is guiding us. It's, it's not a bad pressure. It's a pressure that brings forth the, the greatness that's within us. There is genius in you. There is greatness in every one of us. What we want to do is let that greatness come out. We want to win the Super Bowl of life, and the key to it is that we let God build our house. Let him coach us. Now, there's two major building blocks that need to be in place in this strategy in this key of winning the Super Bowl of life, of allowing God to be the builder of our life, for him to be the coach of our life. And the first building block that we need to make sure is in place, if God is going to be able to shape us, if we're going to allow God to mold us, if we're going to be surrendered to him, and that's where it starts. Uh, if you don't have a desire, if you don't have a hunger for God's will for your life, then 
everything we're sharing tonight will have a, no effect, no meaning to you. I'm assuming because you're here tonight, you've already got to that point. You want God's will for your life. You've already made up your mind. I'm going to surrender to him. Not my will, but his will be done in my life. That's what it takes for him to become the coach, to become the Lord of your life. That's what Lord means, master, ruler, that he is on the throne of our life. We want him to rule and reign in, in our life. But there are two key building blocks that we need to make sure are in place for God to be able to build us. And the first one is that Jesus needs to be the cornerstone of your life. Not only do we need to make Jesus the cornerstone, we need to keep him the cornerstone of our life. You can turn over to Isaiah 28 and just share a couple of verses here that lay the foundation for this principle of God building our house. Isaiah 28 verse 16 says, So this is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who trusts will never be dismayed. I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plumb line. Paul picks it up in Ephesians 2 verse 20 and says, Together we are his house built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. Everybody say, Jesus is my cornerstone. If God's going to build your house, if he's going to build your life, if you're going to win the Super Bowl of life, then you've got to make sure Jesus is the cornerstone of your life. That means that God is at the center of it. You see, a cornerstone in construction, when you put the cornerstone in place, it becomes the reference for every other stone that's laid. It's, the, it's where the plumb line is. It's what creates the foundation, the basis for the construction of that building to be built and for it to be stable and to be straight. If Jesus is not the cornerstone of our life, then our life begins to be built on a shaky foundation. Things begin to get crooked, out of balance, out of line. We lose the plumb line. We lose the reference. God wants to build your life. He wants to be your coach. He wants you to win the Super Bowl of life. He wants you to fulfill the purpose and destiny that has for you. You've got to let him be the one who builds your life. You've got to surrender to him and make sure Jesus is at the very center. It's all about Jesus. Everything is about him. That we put him on our throne. You see, in order to get saved, we, we surrender our life to Jesus and, and we receive him as our Lord and our Savior. And, and he comes and he takes up residence inside of us by his spirit. Know you not that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so we, we come into the kingdom of God. We're born again in that experience and Jesus comes into our life. But it is an everyday decision to keep him as the cornerstone of your life. Every day you've got to make the decision that he is going to be at the center, that he's going to be the priority. Listen, there is going to be opportunity day in and day out for other things to come in and distract you to try and replace Jesus as the cornerstone. Doesn't mean you're not saved, doesn't mean you're not born again. It just means your life gets shaky. And let me just say, right now in our world and in the church today, there are a lot of people that are shaky. And why? Why are, are there houses being built like a car to houses? Why, is there, why are their lives tumbling? Why, when, when the winds uh, come blowing down the plain, their life becomes ruined and destroyed? They're trying to build it themselves. They may be working hard. And see, you may be here tonight and it, you may be in that very boat. I mean, you are working hard. You're trying to do your best to do what's right. You're trying to do everything you possibly can. The only problem is you're doing it in your own strength, your own power, and your own might. And somewhere along the line, Jesus got out of the center of your life. You got out of the place of trusting him and keeping him as the cornerstone. He's the one that brings balance. He's the one that brings forth uh, the, the strength that you need in your life. If God's going to build your house, Jesus has got to be the cornerstone of your life. The second key 
foundation block that needs to be in place for God to build the house is you need to be a doer of the word. Talking about winning the Super Bowl of life. In other words, you know, obviously pick that title because of what's happening this weekend. But really what it's about is about living the victorious life. Fulfilling God's purpose and destiny that, that he has for us. And for that to happen, God's got to be the one who's building our life. He's the one that's got to be directing and coaching us. We've got to be fully submitted and surrendered to him, not our will, but his will. And for that to happen, Jesus has got to be at the center. He's got to be the cornerstone of our life. Everything else comes after Jesus. Your marriage, your family, your job, your career, your ministry. It's a matter of priorities. Jesus, and see, I, I understand it's, it's a thing we have to work at every day because we're being tugged and pulled. and It's so easy for things to get out of kelter, to get out of order. And we just got on a daily basis say, I'm going to seek you first, Jesus. And when we seek him first, then he adds everything unto us. Just a little checkup here tonight. God wants you to win. He wants you to win the Super Bowl of life. Just let God be in the center of your life, building your life, line upon line, precept upon precept, that Jesus is at the center. And you know, he's a, a God of mercy that at any time you see things going the wrong direction, you can just ask the Lord to help get you back on track. So if you're here tonight and you're saying, man, he's really stepping on my toes. Hey, this is, this is a time just to, to make, hey, I want to put Jesus right back in the center of my life. I have to do that on a regular basis. There's demands, different things going on that sometimes things just get out of, get out of whack priority-wise. But if you get Jesus first, everything else will fall into place. He is my Lord. He is my Savior the master of my life. He is the creator, the master builder, the architect. He knows everything that is needed to be known. He knows the beginning from the end for your life. And when you allow him to coach, when you allow him to direct, your life is going to be built. The second key building block is to be a doer of the word. You can turn over to Luke or to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, and Paul, uh, Jesus gives us this principle in a parable. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, it says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them. Everybody say, does them. This is Jesus speaking, and right here is where this building block of being a doer of the word comes into place, the revelation of it. Jesus himself gives it in this parable. It's very, very powerful. Don't miss it. He said, whoever hears my sayings, in other words, my word, my commands, whoever hears these things and does them, I will liken him to a wise man or wise person who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these things of mine and does what not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house and it fell and great was its fall. Are you wise or are you foolish? To be wise means what? To be a doer of the word. See, we read this and a lot of people says, well, to, to build your life on the rock. Well, yeah, we want to build our life on the rock, but how do you build the life on the rock? We're, we're talking about winning the Super Bowl of life. Here's a, a major building block uh, uh, for that to happen in our life. Jesus needs to be the rock. He needs to be the cornerstone. But for him and for us to be on that rock, here's the, here's the key. Jesus, he makes it very clear. He says, be a doer. The one who does my word is wise. The one who does not do my word is foolish. Notice when you read through this, these houses are identical. There's nothing, 
that you can see that's different about them visibly. And again, Jesus isn't talking about a house built by carpenters. He's talking about lives, just like the psalmist in 127 wasn't talking about building a house made of stone or wood. He was talking about building lives. Jesus is, is the same thing. He's not talking about a, a house structure. He's talking about our lives. And he, he says there's these two lives. They look exactly the same. Looking out here, I don't know for sure. You all look the same. You, you go to church, you read the Bible, you pray. Everything on the outside looks exactly the same. But there is a difference. But the difference is not revealed until the storms come. And notice this. In this parable, in this story, the storm came against both structures. The storms come against both lives. So, being a doer of the word, allowing God to build your house, making Jesus the cornerstone of your life does not make you exempt from storms. But what it does do, when God is the builder, when Jesus is the cornerstone, and when you are a doer of the word, when the storms come, how many of you have ever been in a storm? When the storm comes, if you are a doer of the word, then your house, your life will not be shaken. Your life will not have a great fall. But if you're not a doer of the word, if Jesus is not the cornerstone of your life, if God isn't the one building it, then your life will be like a house of cards. Your house will be, your life will be like the one built upon the sand. And when that storm comes, your fall will be great. That's not God's will. That's not God's plan. God's plan is not for your life to be destroyed. God's plan is not for you to have a great fall. His plan for your life is to have a life of victory, a life of overcoming, a life that's more than a conqueror, a life that is an achiever, a life that is great, a life that is abundant. God has a supernatural plan for you, but you've got to allow Him to be the builder of your life, and for him to be the builder of your life, Jesus has got to be at the very center, the cornerstone, that we don't get off center, we don't get off counter, we don't follow every wind of doctrine that comes blowing down I-44 or Highway 75 or wherever they come from, that we don't get distracted by the cares of the world and all the distractions that surround us, but we have our eyes fixed upon Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, that we are a doer of the word, not just a hearer. You're not just coming here on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and letting your ears be tickled, but you're letting that word get in your heart, and then you're following through, and you're being a doer of the word. When he says it, to forgive, you forgive. When it says to give, you give. When it says to go here, you go there. When it says to go there, you go here. We are obedient. Everybody say obey. obey. See, it's about being obedient. Everybody got real quiet. In other words, as Nike said, just do it. Turn to somebody and say, just do it. And what I'm talking about is just do the word. I understand sometimes how we can delay just doing the word and how we sometimes can come up with excuses not to do God's word. But if we want to be Super Bowl champions of life, then you've got to be like the football players who are disciplined, who are willing to do what needs to be done in order for them. You see, in order for you to win in life, you've got to be able to follow through with what God is telling us to do. No more delay, just obey. No more excuse. See, Moses is a great illustration for us. God told him what to do. But Moses had all kinds of excuses. I can't talk. I've messed up. I've made mistakes. Somebody else could do this better than me. Who's, who shall I say sent me? 
Why will they listen to me? Why should I go? It's just, I can't do it. I'm weak. I'm not, it's, you know, let somebody else do it. Not me. Uh, I, I'm surely not qualified. No, no more excuses. Let's just do it. Let's just obey. What if we, every day we got up and we just did what God said to do? See, there are some of you here tonight, there are things God has told you to do in your heart. I'm talking about winning the Super Bowl of life. There, there are some victories that are right in front of you. They're just around the corner. You just got to be obedient to what God's told you to do. Don't delay. Don't make excuses. Make up your mind tonight. I'm going to obey God. When you obey God, that's when you see the Red Sea parted. That's when you see the lion's mouth shut. That's when you see when you're thrown in the fire that you're not burned in the middle of it. When you obey, that's when you're able to get out of the boat and you can walk on the water. It's where the miracles happen. It's where the impossible happen. God is a miracle working God, but he, and for those miracles to show up, you've got to get out of the boat. You, you've got to walk by faith. And to walk by faith, it takes somebody who's willing to obey God and to do what God says to do. Or Robert said, the one thing I want on my tomb when I die is he obeyed God. I want to obey God for my life. Every one of us is different. What God's asking you to do isn't what he's asking me to do. Now, there's some things he's asking us all to do, and that's where we ought to start. People say, well, what's, I just don't know what God's will is. I don't know what he's asking me to do. Well, he's asking you to be a witness. He's asking you to come to church. He's asking you to read the word. He's asking you to give. I mean, there's some things that are just clear as mud in God's Word. Start there. God wants to be the coach of your life. He wants to build your life. He wants to build your life into an empire state building, a giant of faith, a light and a beacon for His kingdom. Every one of you, God has ordained you. He has called you, and he's chosen you, and he's equipped you, and he wants to launch you out into the deep. But you've got to sign up to let him coach your life and to let Jesus be the Lord of your life and that you are willing to obey him and be a doer of the word. And when the storms come, Larry, listen, once you decide to be that water walker, once you decide to be that lion tamer, once you decide to be that sea parter, once you decide to be that one who brings the walls down, you're going to encounter giants. You're, in, you're going to encounter storms. But your life will be built on the rock because you're a doer of the word. And the winds can blow and the rain can come but we are of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We are Super Bowl champions when God builds our life. When Jesus is sitting on the throne of our life and we are following the lead of his spirit and we're obeying his word. The Bible gives us some great examples throughout the Bible of people who have been Super Bowl champions to encourage us, not just to be a story, but to encourage us to follow them, to learn from them. When you read the story of Moses, see, Super Bowl champions aren't perfect. Super Bowl champions of life, there are mistakes that happen in our life. Moses wasn't perfect, killed the person, got put on the backside of the desert for 80 years. So if you're here tonight and you're 80 years old, your life is just starting. So don't be sitting there, boy, I hope these young people get this word. No, it's for you. And if you're here and you're 18, David, peach fuzz on his face, kind of a meek guy out in the pasture, taking care of sheep, fighting bears, fighting lions. All of a sudden, God brought him before the giant Goliath. 
And it was David who brought the giant down with the power of God on top of that little stone that, he's, that he threw at that, that giant. See, these were all men with faults and weaknesses. But they had a heart after God that God would build their life. That they would be obedient to what God wanted them to do. See, Saul was on the other side. And that's where we see in Samuel 15, 22, that God would prefer obedience over sacrifice. And lots of times we get into that mold where, you know, we just, a mentality, oh, we're sacrificing for the Lord, we're sacrificing, we're doing this. And God, all he wants us to do is be obedient to him. You see, Paul was obedient to the call. Joseph, thrown in prison, thrown in the pit. But when he was obedient to what God called him to do, God brought him out of the pit and brought him to the palace. And you may be here in a pit tonight. You may be like Daniel. I mean, there are story after story of people in the Bible that became Super Bowl champions for God. Why? Because they were perfect? Because they didn't make any mistakes? Because they were special in some way? No. It's because they let God build their life and they were obedient to what God told them to do. And if they messed up or made a mistake, they were quick to repent and get back on the right track. There's a path that God has you on. He wants to take you from glory to glory, strength to strength, faith to faith. He wants to bring you before the championship crowning where he brings in the Super Bowl trophy and hand it to you because you've done what he's called you to do. You're on the path to be a Super Bowl champion, to be a winner in life. If you let God build your life, if you keep Jesus at the center of it, the cornerstone of it, keep him there. Make him their cornerstone. Keep there and be a doer of the word. Bow your heads all across this room. I want to pray tonight for every person here for a fresh boldness to be obedient to what God's telling you to do. A fresh understanding of God's calling upon your life to stretch your faith and for, to expand the horizons of what God has for you. And if you're here tonight and, and, and you've somehow wandered a, 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 a different direction or you're here and you've wondered if you've been disqualified or maybe you're here and, and, and you just don't know exactly what's, what's happening in your life, you may be in a storm and you feel like your house has had a great fall. Tonight's a night to give it over to the Lord and let Him put it back together again. Even though... When Humpty Dumpty had a great fall and all the king's men and all the king horses couldn't put it back together again, I've got somebody who can put your life back together and can launch you out into the destiny that he has for you. I want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray for God to put grace in you for you to be obedient to that call that he has. There are those here that there's certain things that God's told you to do and you've delayed doing them. You've put off doing them. You've come up with excuses. Tonight, I want to pray for boldness to come upon you to step out and do what God's called you to do. I want everyone to stand up across this room here tonight. There are others of you here tonight. You're believing God for, for breakthrough. You're believing God for certain things. You've been seeking God for direction. God is speaking to you. I want to pray for those ears to be open to hear what God is saying for you to step out into what he's calling you to do. Others of you here, there are things that, that you're seeking God for, answers that you're needing. I'm telling you tonight, if you let God build your life, He's going to open up your eyes to the things that he has for you. He is not keeping any secrets. He's not holding anything back. What we've got to do is get our focus on him and allow him to direct us. And when he directs us, here's the deal. You've got to be willing to obey that direction. He's not going to give you the next step until you take the last step he told you to take. God is a one step. I don't know how many times I would have asked and I would love God to tell me how I'm going to get over there. But it's one step. It's one step at a time. One step at a time. And you know, until you take that step, that, he's, that last step he's told you, he's not going to give you the next step. If you're here tonight and you're 
needing God's direction, if you're here and you're needing God's grace to be obedient, maybe there's things that are not right in your life. You know you've got to make some corrections. This is the night to be obedient. A lot of the same voice that directs is the voice that corrects. And often before you can hear that voice of direction, you need to recognize the voice of correction. This is a night for us to surrender new and afresh to God for His will. How many of you want God's will in your life? If you're here tonight and you're saying, I need prayer for God's grace, God's boldness, God's strength in order for Him to direct my life, for me to be able to be obedient to what He's calling me to do, for me to be able to hear what He's wanting me to do, I want to pray for you. If that's you, just lift up your hand. Say, that's me. I need that. All across the room, right here, right over here, right here. Yeah, see, God's speaking. God's wanting. I want you just to come. You raise your hand. Just come real quickly. Just come. We're going to pray. We're going to dismiss in five minutes. Come on forward. Raise your hand. Come on. If you're here and you're needing a miracle or breakthrough, I want you to come right now. And coming, you're coming to Jesus. You need a miracle. You need a breakthrough. You need a turnaround in some area. We're talking about winning the Super Bowl of life. Unless you can get the breakthrough. See, if you're facing a Goliath, you're facing the, the Jericho wall, you're facing the lion in the lion's den, and you don't know how to get out of that. If it seems impossible to you, you're not going to be able to go forward into the place of victory. You've got to get the breakthrough. You've got to have your eyes opened up and see God's bigger than, than the problem. You've got to see that he can shut the lion's mouth. You've got to have God deposits his anointing, his strength, his insight, so that you can step out and see the breakthrough that you need. God wants to take you from where you are to where he wants you to be. There's a plan ahead for you. But here's the deal. you got to let God do it. You've got to cooperate with God. It, it, it's kind of an oxymoron. God's got to do it, but you've got to walk it out. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by the Spirit of God. It's, it's a, we are co-laborers with God. He's working with, that's his plan. That's the way he works it. When David brought Goliath down, David didn't do that in his power or his might, but David had to walk out and pick up the five smooth stones. And when he took that step and he took that slingshot and he did what he could and he released it, God's super came upon that stone and it became a guided missile that went into the giant's forehead. When you step out and you pick up the five smooth stones that God has for you, he's going to put his super on your natural. It's working together. God, that's how God builds us. He's working in us to will and do his good pleasure. We just don't sit back and don't do anything. We cooperate. What's the cooperation? I'm doing what God says to do. I'm being a doer of the word. And as I'm being a doer of the word, I'm building my life upon the rock. Yeah, here comes the storm. Here comes the, here comes the wind. Here comes the rain. But it's not going to shake me. It's not going to deter me. I'm not going to stop. I'm keep, he, he's going to guide me through the, the storm. He's going to uphold me in the storm. And I'm going to come out on the other side victorious. I'm going from strength to strength, glory to glory. I'm going to become the Super Bowl champion that God's ordained me to be, the winner in life. Lift up your hands right now. He is the source. He's the deliverer. He's the one that's got the creative idea. He's the one that's got the breakthrough. He's the one that's got the grace. He's the source, and you're looking to him. Come on, lift your hands to Jesus. Get your eyes on him and begin to let him download into you his grace his mercy, his forgiveness, his strength, his insight, his wisdom. Father, I come in the name of Jesus and come into agreement with every one of these that have stepped forward to become Super Bowl champions for you. Lord, download into them what they need, the grace, your ability, the strength, the wisdom, the boldness to be able to get out of the boat. You're telling somebody to get out of the boat. Somebody down here, God's telling you to get out of the boat. Not out of the boat, literally, but there, it's, it's an analogy. And you know who, who I'm talking to. More than one of you. God's been telling you, get out of the boat. And you've been afraid. You've been 
hesitant. You've been delaying. You've been coming up with excuses. And God is telling you, get out of the boat. Some of you, there is a Goliath in front of you. And you've got to reach down and pick up those five smooth stones. There's some of you, there's a Jericho wall. And you've got to get bold enough to shout at that wall. And it will come tumbling down. There's victory ahead of you. All across this room, set your hands out to these right here, right now. Father, we pray right now for every person here. Lord, you know the beginning from the end, and we've put ourselves in agreement for every need to be met, every strategy to be revealed. Lord, every, everything that needs to be orchestrated, Lord, let them see it, let them hear it, and then let them follow through to be obedient into what you're telling them to be. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, let's shout to the Lord right now. Everybody say, I'm going to let God build my house. I'm going to keep Jesus the cornerstone of my life. And I'm going to be a doer of the word. Everybody say, just do it. Now shout to the Lord. You all are Super Bowl champions of life because God has ordained and made you Super Bowl champions of life. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you're here visiting with us, if you'd get your things, you up front here, we've got some people to pray with you, agree with you specifically what you're believing for. If you're visiting, if you'd get your things, and right out the center doors here, we have a reception for you, some things we want to give you, want to get to know you a little bit better. If you're here considering making Victory your home church, or you have questions about the church, right over here, Pastor Jerry's here to meet you. He's got some things for you, can answer your questions. The rest of it, you're dismissed. Have a great week, Wednesday night, midweek service. Rick Renner will be here finishing up what he started last Wednesday. Next weekend will be another power-packed week. Don't forget the marriage seminar, Valentine banquet. Men, go out and get your tickets tonight. God bless you. You are Super Bowl champions. Jesus, be the center of it all. Jesus, be the center of it all. From beginning to the end.